all right guys so it's your boy Francis here and I'm back with another tutorial and this time I'm gonna be showing you guys how I export full wedding videos so I'm gonna be showing you how I export full wedding videos and um, this is not a full wedding video but um, all my wedding videos are usually like over an hour long most of the time it's like two to three hours but I like to edit them down to like two hours so how do you export huge files from Premiere Pro so that way you know you can fit them onto like DVDs or you can just like kind of make it easy to um, you know to give to your clients because you don't want to like you know give them huge files I mean it, it depends on what you do with your wedding stuff but I always like to give them like hour-long videos like full videos we're not, we're not talking about highlights here guys we're talking about the full wedding videos so it depends on how you guys deliver your packages but in my packages I always deliver the full video and then the highlight video and um, depending on the package they choose I also add a trailer in there or just some other stuff that I add into it so different packages and stuff like that so for this example I'm gonna be showing you how I deliver um, the full wedding video how I export the full wedding video from Premiere Pro so as we all know you know a full wedding video let's say if it's two hours long after you've edited everything and it's two hours long that's a huge file now I'm not saying everybody edits that way but most of us well I know me I always edit my edits my full wedding videos are always over an hour okay guys they're always over an hour so somebody asked me a question on um, one of my um one of my videos they were like oh how do you export you know a wedding that's like a huge wedding how do you shrink the file so um, what I do is I don't shrink the files because I don't want to lose quality what I do is I separate I um, separate the files so let's say this is the full wedding right and it's um like let's say right now it's uh, <clears throat> okay let's just do this let's just make it um, twice this long okay so copy there and then just uh, paste that so now we've pasted it so as you can see here it's two hours long guys it's a two hour long wedding video okay two hours long wedding video so what you do is if you got a file like this let's say this is the full wedding which is two hours long what you do is when you go here to export this thing see it's going to be like 11 gigabytes okay so my exporting settings what I do for most of my weddings is I just keep it on you know H264 I don't do blu-ray it's, it's just usual it's just a freaking Jaimanga's file like look at that 22 anyways so I just keep it at H.264 I don't do no 1080 none of that stuff and uh, MPEG I don't do none of that I just keep it on H.264 and then here on the preset I always put it on um, match source and um, high bit rate so that way you know it's gonna match the source files which is like the files that you used down here so whatever format these files are if the 1080p 60 frames or 1080p 30 frames whatever it's gonna match those source files okay so that's what I do and you can always change those settings but I always I um, I already I don't like touching that unless like when I'm first adding the video the videos to it and what I do mostly all the time is like when I'm um, putting the videos exporting the videos from like let's say here to here I always like to keep it the same um, you know frame rate the same size everything 1080p if it's 1080p I like keeping like that I like keeping it like that and um, I match other files to my main camera so if my main camera was shooting in 1080p 24 frames and all the other cameras I'm gonna match them to that camera so that way it's easier when you bring it into um, uh, Premiere Pro to edit so that's a tip guys always 
um, have your camera shoot at the same frame rate and same um, resolution okay so if it's 1080p um, 30 frames or 60 frames have all your cameras set to that frame rate and to that resolution I mean you can always change it in uh, post-production but it's always comes out better if you do it during the filming okay guys so that way um, if um, you, you're creating your sequences here let's say we create <coughs> let's say we're creating a sequence right new sequence so what you could do is um like I always keep it on digital um, SLR cause um, I don't that's what I've been using for a long time and I don't see any mirrorless cameras here so I, this is good this good this works for me so that's what I do so digital SLR and um, I don't usually do 24 frames guys shoot do whatever you do okay don't convert me to shooting 24 frames I don't do that okay because I like slowing down my footage especially for highlights so if I um, shoot 24 frames and I slow it down it's gonna be choppy so I always like doing the highest so mostly you could change I always do um 1080 60 60 you know 60 frames per second so that way I can slow it down and sometimes I have a dedicated uh, b-roll camera that shoots even way over like you know 120 frames per second so that way when I slow it down it's battery smooth so that's for another video so for this video let's just say 1080p and um, 30 frames per second I'm not gonna create a sequence now because I'm gonna show you why later so so yeah so let's say um, like I say you you try to export this file and it was just too huge right so instead of you can shrink this you know let's say high bit right here you can go down here and play with these and shrink it so here on um, target bitrate is where you control the video quality so the lower you go the shittier your video quality is going to be the higher you go the you know see it went up to 27 um, gigabytes so it's going to be a huge quality so the higher you go see 39 gigabytes so um, I like to keep it on the regular um, the default is 10 so 10 brings it to a like regular quality, good quality or whatever it is right now, you know, normal quality. So what I do here, so it changes. So see, when you change these, the preset changes. But when you just put it on, you know, match the source, high bit rate, the default comes down to 10 and 12 over here. So if you want to like reduce your files and all that stuff, this is what you play with. But I recommend you don't play with these unless you want to make it higher if you're still gonna keep if you're still gonna um um keep a, a smaller file so what i do is this is too much of a huge file for me and especially that i eventually put these videos on dvds and v dvds take um 4.7 gigabytes so my main thing what i want to do is i want to um lower it down to 4.7 gigabytes or even way lower than that which is what i recommend is something lower than 4.7 which is like maybe four point change there so what you do is um you go what i do is i separate these files so what i do is um i always like to make it an hour is going to be exactly see how it's an hour here so what you, you can do to to like get to an hour is just click that and click zero okay so when you go on here just click on it and then type zero and enter it's gonna bring it to the beginning and what you can do again is just click here and go to here and put one so that's one hour right and when you click enter it's gonna bring you to the one hour mark which is right here so let's click C here and we cut that and let's click a here and move these files so what we do here is um V back so what we do here is now this is going to be my part one so this is an hour it's going to be my part one of the wedding um and i'm doing this showing you that let's say i've already edited all this you know the ceremony the let's say they had a first look let's say the getting ready all that stuff is within an hour and mostly i like ending it on the ceremony right here or maybe on maybe they're about to enter in the reception or maybe they do the first dance wherever the one hour lands after like i do the full edit that's where I usually transition it and just cut it there and I usually put in text end of part one and then what I do is I make the rest of this part two so you copy here you delete that 
let's go back to full screen okay so <clears throat> so what you do is um the rest of the files that you know the rest of the wedding files what you do is you create another sequence there you go and you name this full wedding part two what I do usually is just like you know part two there you go so um, I'm sorry I didn't like get into the settings of the sequences there but you know you can get into all that and just match whatever so you this is now part two of the wedding so you just like paste the files over here so let's see the full timeline there you go so now this is part two so part two is also over like 130 but you can let's say you haven't edited this part of the wedding you can now edit it down to whereby you want to get it to that one hour mark so that way you have part one and part two and they're both like an hour long sometimes it could be shorter sometimes some of my weddings go up to like maybe part two is usually sometimes shorter maybe 40 minutes maybe it could just be over a minute and it can be over an hour eight minutes depending on what you do and sometimes I have longer weddings like let's say I shot the whole day which is like 12 hours and I make another part three so I cut it on this on the one hour mark of this and put the rest in part three okay guys so that's what I do so in this um in this to in this tutorial here which was we're just gonna say we got you know we got um yeah we got one hour we got one hour of each part one and part two so let's go but this is part one so now you're gonna notice that once you cut it on the one hour mark when you go in here and you click the export and media you go here you're gonna notice that it's gonna go when you put the edge edge point 264 here and then go on uh, match high bit rate it's gonna most likely it's gonna be around the four gigabyte and change okay so that's perfect right there because you still have the full quality and um, it's gonna be so you still have the high bit rate quality and it's on you know 4.3 um, gigabytes so just like four gigabytes and then you export this so the reason why I like keeping it on four gigabytes or, uh, or less is because like I told you I always like not I always like most of my weddings I always offer DVDs I'm trying to change that now I'm trying to just make it straight USB and before files no DVDs but um, right now I've been doing you know DVDs like for three years now so I'm always used to just editing it this way like you know one hour long and stuff like that I never do like two hour long video so I always like cutting it in part one part two so um, yeah so the reason why I like keeping it below four gigabytes is so that way it could fit on a DVD file okay it can fit on a DVD and DVDs are like 4.7 gigabytes so that's how you do it so now after you like you know after you export um, your, your part one you you go to part two and you do the same part two you go to export media and then um, you see it's gonna be on 4.6 which is pretty good because once this um, once this file um, renders it's uh, most likely it's gonna shrink a little bit more than this is probably gonna be like 3.9 gigabytes or maybe even 4.1 gigabytes so it's going to shrink than this number it's just like an estimated file size as you can see it says it here estimated file size so it's not going to be more than this but this is like about the estimated and this is the settings that I uh, that I usually do for like a nice quality because like I told you I'm not doing no blu-ray or none of that you know I'm not doing no high quality HD because the files always come out huge and that's not going to fit on a DVD this is 9 gigabytes guys so uh, what can fit on a DVD is high bit rate and it's still going to be good quality okay guys and then you export it so that's how I do it I cut them into part 1 part 2 or part 3 if the wedding was longer so now that you got that information how do you now turn it, to, turn it into an um, into an image that you can burn on that you can turn into a DVD so what I do is I have um, I use this software here called DVD burner this is a free software in a, in the App Store completely free and it you know renders your whole video for free no watermarks no nothing just free I usually don't use this software I use another software called iSky um, what's that iSky soft deluxe that's on my, um, my iMac because I usually do all this stuff on the iMac so 
I have another software on the iMac, but that software is a paid software. I paid for that software, but I was just giving you an example. You can get free um, DVD burner softwares and just convert your MP4 files into an ISO file. So after you convert your MP4 file into an ISO file, uh, a disk image file, you can now go ahead and just put that file on, on a computer that has a disk burner and burn that file to a DVD. So that's how you do it. So that's how I um, shrink my full wedding videos. I don't shrink the file size. I just cut them. I just separate them into, you know, part ones, part twos, stuff like that. And that way they, you know, they become smaller files that I can work with. Or if I want to upload them online for clients, it's more easier to do it with like smaller files than a whole huge file. So that's the tutorial for today. I was just trying to show you how I kind of like shrink the files and kind of um, put them out to burn them. All right, guys. So that was a tutorial for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click the like button, guys, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. You know, I'm going to be bringing you more tutorials on this. Uh, mostly like you see I'm just gonna be focusing on weddings and I'm just gonna be uh, I'm also gonna be doing final cut tutorials so just stick around and make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment if you have any questions or what kind of stuff you want to see me um, make a tutorial on later concerning Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro thank you I'll see you guys in the next one